Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney and this is Creative on the Cheap. This is the first video of 2024 and I am so excited for this year. I'm bringing back some of your favorites, the mystery box with some fun new twists to it. I've got new series plans, tips, tricks. If you are new here, I would love for you to become a subscriber and join the creative club. I just like to have fun here if I'm being honest. Today I've rounded up some of my most favorite Valentine DIYs, including some from my Valentine DIY vault. There's some oldies, but some goodies in here. So let's get crafting. I am kicking off with this DIY. Now, those of you who follow me on Instagram have seen this because this was a Christmas gift for my husband, but y'all, this is a gift that you can give for many different occasions. And here is the idea of this box. You want to find yourself a container. And I just created this date night sticker in Cricut design space. I will link the file down below. What you're trying to do here is basically every month, someone is in charge of the date night box. So for this themed box, I did date night in. So I started off with a fun two player game that I put in there. I will definitely recommend some games down below in the description box that we love to play. Also, of course, you're going to need some super cozy jammies. So I picked up some from Target for him and for her. You can add some soda to this. You could add sparkling cider. You could add wine, champagne, whatever kind of drink that you want to add to it as well. Of course, you're going to want some kind of a sweet treat in there and then throw in a bag of popcorn for when you get to movie time. For dinner, I created this little gift card holder on my laser, just doing dominoes. So you could do Uber Eats, just somewhere where basically it could be delivered to your house because the whole the idea is that this is date night in. And then this cute little DIY has to do with the movie. Let me show you what this is about. So grab one of these envelopes from Dollar Tree. And all I did for this was I created this little movie themed scrapbook paper. I will link this file down below for you. I measured it out so that I could cut it, trim it down, and then just use a glue stick to glue that back down. I did add that decal that says, and the winner is, and then I reattached the beads. So the envelope plays off the Academy Awards, grab an index card, pick an actor, write it on one side, and then flip it over and write a couple of movies. And then you guys can choose together what kind of movie you want. And that's the last component of this date night in box. I just packaged it up with some cellophane, tied it off with a bow. Let me know down below if you have any great date night themed baskets. You could do a cooking one. You could do a pictures around the city. So many options. Please share your ideas down below in the comments. Let's make a cute Valentine wreath that was inspired by an Argyle sweater. You want to start by grabbing one of these foam wreath forms that you can pick up from Dollar Tree and giving it a good coat of gray paint. I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color steel. Once it's all painted, you can choose the hard way or the easy way for this next step. The hard way is going to be picking up some Valentine colored felt. I'm using red and pink. You could throw in white, tracing hearts, and then cutting them out by hand. The easy way is just to go ahead and buy a prepackaged pack of felt hearts it will definitely make this not take as long once you have your hearts you got to wrap the wreath form to do this we're going to be using some yarn be yarn that i picked up from hobby lobby find yourself a great movie and just start wrapping once you're done wrapping, which seems like an eternity later, you want to tie off that yarn. And then I did use a little bit of hot glue just to secure it a little bit extra and then grab your felt hearts and start laying them out. Once you have them laid out on your wreath form, you are ready to hot glue those down. The final step to complete this wreath is to take some more of that gray yarn and we're going to wrap it around doing X's on the heart. So first I started with the yarn and I just did from the top right of each heart to the bottom um, left of the heart. And then I went and did that all the way around. So I did the first, I guess, slash mark one direction. Then I took another piece of yarn and did the other way to make X's on each of the hearts, secured it again with a knot and some hot glue. And then this was ready to be hung up. Oh, 
let's jump into this DIY. You want to grab a gumball container. I got mine from Hobby Lobby, some large popsicle sticks. Mine came from Walmart and some of the wooden heart picks from Dollar Tree. You want to start by taking one of the large popsicle sticks and cutting five rectangles from that popsicle stick. I did try to use my miter shears at first, but found that 10 snips worked so much easier. From there, you want to grab your wooden skewers and you want to trim off the little bamboo stick part of the heart skewer. Taking my little chopped up popsicle sticks, I'm taking my black acrylic marker and drawing, I guess, two sides of a triangle on one side of these rectangles. As you can tell, we're turning these into envelopes. I also did take the wooden hearts and use those same acrylic markers where I trimmed the bamboo skewer off of the heart. I just little details. I just wanted to make sure to cover up that little exposed wood. And then you want to take some hot glue and hot glue these hearts down onto the envelopes. Now you can make 14 of these and put little messages on the other side of the envelope and each day they can pick out for the month of February. Lots of different things you could do with it. You could put candy mixed in with it, but it's just a very cute little Valentine decor piece. some red felt and we're going to cut these down into rectangles basically just halving it cutting it until you get the size that you need and then I just freehanded by tracing a heart and I cut out a ton of hearts now what we're making is a bouquet and you will need two felt hearts for every heart quote unquote rose that you are making once the hearts were all cut out, originally my plan was to take some yarn and just to do a running stitch around the edge, sewing two hearts together. But I quickly decided this is not the route I wanted to go. So I ended up starting by just hot gluing my heart until I got to the bottom of the heart and then I stuffed it with some pillow fluff. Here's where you need to make a decision. You do need to put some wire stems on these hearts now. I did um, glue my ends of the heart. I basically just filled the hearts and then I sealed them all off. You could leave the end open and then put your wire in there. I've made a project like this before and for whatever reason when I inserted the wire into the heart and then sealed up the heart afterwards it was just really floofy even though I glued the stick directly to the felt inside the heart. So. I am taking the approach of sealing up all the hearts and then I am taking my floral wire that just came from Dollar Tree and I'm poking a hole in the back of the heart, inserting the wire and then just kind of securing it a little bit because you're not going to see the backs of this because I'm using this as a bouquet that you can kind of lay down on a surface. So up to you which route you decide to go to get your wire stems put in. My hearts are all complete. You'll notice that I did wrap all of the wires with just some of that green floral tape. Now you can decide whether or not you just want your bouquet just to be the plain hearts. I did pull out a couple different things and played around with some of these bur burlap hearts that came from Dollar Tree. I played around with putting some greenery and some florals. And in the end, I just liked it plain. So I bunched them together, took some floral tape, wrapped it around the stems, and then I just made a quick bow, hot glued it down, and then this bouquet is ready to go. fun DIY. You want to start with some oven bake clay. This is the Sculpey brand oven bake. That's just the brand I prefer to use most of the time. And it's in the color tan. I rolled it out and cut out some heart shapes with the cookie cutter. Then I took some red, pink, and white and did smaller hearts as well. Now the whole idea here is that these smaller hearts are going to kind of act like fondant on some of the cookies. So to get these attached, I would recommend just using some water. You can get them attached or if you want to bake them separately, you can definitely go in and just glue the faux fondant on top after the fact. Once those were ready to bake, I just followed the directions. I stuck them in the oven at 130 degrees for 15 minutes. Once they're done baking, turn off the oven and let them cool completely completely in the oven. Just don't take them out. Just let them sit in there and you'll be good to go. Once they were completely cooled, I did take these three plain hearts that I had also baked and decided I wanted to do kind of a different little technique. Well, it's not really different. You guys see me use these same supplies all the time. I took white hot glue to act as the icing, and then I'm just using some of these polymer clay faux sprinkles to put on top of the hot glue. 
it's time to make the cute display stand for these. So I'm using one of these wooden crates from Dollar Tree that I painted white along with one of these little palette pieces also from Dollar Tree that I painted white. And then I grabbed two of the longer dowel rods and stained them with some brown wax and then gave them a quick snip so that I could put this together. Then all I'm doing is gluing these dowel rods into the corners of my crate and I will attach that wooden um, palette piece on the very top. I'm just using hot glue for this. If you feel like this might be manhandled or you know messed with you might want to use a little bit of a stronger glue but the hot glue should do just fine. The next step is to grab a piece of fabric. I just had this little scrap in my pile. It originally came from Hobby Lobby. I cut some small little triangles and I made a cute little pennant banner for my stand. Now I did want to quickly mention, because I forgot to say this a minute ago, the dowel rods um, actually aren't the same lengths. The one in the back are a little bit taller because I wanted the pallet roof to kind of lean forward, but totally up to you, your preference, what you like. If you just want a flat roof, that's fine. Or if you want it to lean forward, then definitely make sure you make those different heights. Let's wrap up this DIY. So I grabbed this little chalkboard that came from Hobby Lobby and my Sharpie paint pen. And I just wrote cookies for sale. If you have a Cricut, you could make a little decal for it if you wanted to, or even just print something off on your printer, attach that. And then I just filled it with some raffia, put my faux cookies in there, and then this was ready to be displayed. This DIY probably does not need a lot of explaining because I'm sure you've all seen it, but I found this really cute set of teacups from the thrift store. And all I'm doing is taking some Dollar Tree red candles. I did pull off the outer wrapper. Make sure you do that. You want to melt them down, secure your wick. Yeah, I didn't have any long bamboo skewers at the time, so <laughs> had to rig that up, put them in a big pot, melt the wax all the way down. You can reuse the wicks from these Dollar Tree candles. Simply just put a little hot glue on it, put it at the bottom of your mug and then pour that warm wax in there. You can leave them um, unscented. You can add scent to them if you would like. I also, for two of these, did not put any wicks in there just for those people that might be in an office and you're not allowed to burn candles. Then you can put it on one of those mug warmers and still melt it and get that scent. grab this container from Dollar Tree and did my little glitter removal hack, which is to spray it goo on and use a scraper. Um, it just slides right off and then you wipe it. I'm telling you, it's the easiest way to get glitter off. Painted the whole container white. And then I created a decal on my Cricut that just says kisses and um, 25 cents. Apply that to there. And then literally this is so easy. I just added some of these little burlap flowers from Dollar Tree, a little bit of greenery. And then I did put in some chocolate kisses this would make a great gift idea um, or just something that you have out during the Valentine season. Um, or if you just want to give kisses to somebody without actually kissing them, you could make this as well. So super easy and super yummy as well. grab some burlap and some fabric for this next DIY. We're going to make a really cute Valentine garland. So for this, I had some of this gray burlap that I pressed out and then I measured it and cut myself some rectangles that measured about six by four and a half. Once I got all of those cut, I folded the pieces in half and then just cut a little slit in the bottom to make it more of a pennant look. And then it was time to work with my fabric. I just used a wooden heart that came from Dollar Tree as my little template. It, traced out these hearts and then I got them all attached just using some Allen's tacky glue. I ended up making six of the gray pennant pieces and now it's time to work on what I'm going to attach it to. I didn't want to just use ribbon or twine. I decided I wanted to have something that kind of looked like a chain. So to get started, I made a little loop and tied a knot. And then all you do is you continuously just make loops and feed that twine through. You keep doing it until you get the length that you want. Really simple to do. And in the end, you end up with this really neat looking chain made out of twine. To finish it off, just cut the twine and just tie a little knot 
and then just attach those pendant pieces with some hot glue and you've got yourself a really unique Valentine garland. This Dollar Tree DIY will take you no time at all. Start with some styrofoam cones and you wanna begin with wrapping it with some yarn. You can grab any color yarn you want. I'll be using white and red. Secure it with a little hot glue and just wrap it all the way around. Then take this little package of felt heart stickers and begin by sticking them onto the yarn. I didn't find the need to have to also hot glue them because the adhesive on the sticker worked just as well. Once I got my white tree done, I did a red version and only added one sticker and that's it. These are ready to be displayed. Blade. Let's make a 3D Valentine shadow box using this frame I got from Hobby Lobby on clearance, but you could find one the same size from Dollar Tree. Start by popping off the backing and then pick out a scrapbook paper you'd like to use. I'm using this Buffalo check one that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I just traced around the frame backing, used a glue stick to get that scrapbook paper reattached and then hot glued it back into my frame. From there, I grabbed one of these hearts from the set of hearts that I got from the Dollar Tree Plus section and I painted it red. Now I wanted it to have a little bit of a 3D element so I took a tower block and trimmed it down with my miter shears, hot glued that onto my scrapbook paper, and then glued my heart on top of that. I wanted to keep it simple but you definitely could add text to this, you could add some florals, but it's a great piece for tear trays or even a bookshelf. This DIY will cost you less than $3 to make and actually you can display it all year long. So you wanna start with some dowel rods. It's customizable to your family. So for me, I grabbed two different sizes of dowel rods. The larger dowel rod, I cut down to five inches and four and a half inches. And then the smaller dowel rod, I cut down to three and a quarter inch and then two that were both three inches. Once I had my five pieces cut, which these five pieces represent the five people in my family, I started to paint. So the two pieces that were three inches, I painted pink. I painted myself red, my hubby gray, and then the other three and a quarter inch piece I painted gray to represent my son. Now it was time to work on the heads. So for this, you will need some wooden beads that have a flat side. I got mine from Hobby Lobby. These may, I don't know, these heads look so big, which is perfect because everyone in my family has a large head. My kids were at 99th percentile with their heads all through my pregnancies. Anyway, so once you find your beads, you're gonna want to decide the size of your beads based on your dowel rods. So just pick up your dowel rods and your beads from Hobby Lobby when they're on sale, super cheap to do. Hot glue those down and then secure your pieces together. I just use some hot glue. If you feel like it might be manhandled a little bit, you might wanna use something a little stronger like E6000 or my preferred choice, the Gorilla Clear Grip Glue. As you can see, I finished it off with a little twine that I just used some hot glue and a wooden heart that I painted white from Dollar Tree. I also wrote on my little wooden heart, established 1999, because that is the year I got married. And then this is ready to be displayed. Again, you could display it all year long. You could make different versions of this for different holidays. It's a great gift idea, maybe for a new family, but an easy, inexpensive DIY that you can do. has a special backstory. So this is actually something I made before I even started my YouTube channel. It represents my husband, Spence plus Courtney, that's on the tree. Now, when I first met Jennifer from Little Bit of Common Crazy and Shannon, the Daily DIYer, um, we were met at a convention. I actually have a vlog of it on my channel. I will link it down below if you wanna see kind of the very first time. Those They were the first YouTubers I ever met. So I'll link that vlog down below. But um, I decided I wanna take him a present and since the convention was at the end of 
January, I wanted to make one for each of them. So really pretty simple here. I took a wood round and I sketched out the birch trees and then I began to wood burn, painted a heart on there. I will say burning on the actual wood part, really simple and easy. When you go to start doing the burn marks on the paint, you just have to have a little bit more patience. Um, just apply even pressure. It does take a little bit longer because it's having to burn through that paint. But I was very happy with how they turned out. Um, I had one that said J plus B for Jennifer and then S plus B for Shannon. And it's just, it was a really special DIY. And yeah, I hope you guys liked it. grab some two by four scrap wood that I sanded down for this project. The locks are ready to get a facelift. So I'm going to paint them all with some of this plaster colored paint by Waverly. I'm not going for full coverage here. I'm just covering it till I like how it looks. Then taking three different colors, a light green, a light pink, and a light purple. I am going to paint hearts on these. Now for the first one, I am going to use some of these Dollar Tree stickers and take off the letters to spell out love and stick those down kind of in the center of the block. Then taking the pencil, I'm going to sketch out a heart around it and then start painting with some pink paint. Once I get that all nice and painted, I'll pull off the love letters and it will leave a nice little kind of whole stencil vibe. Now you could just leave stickers on there if you wanted to, or you could actually use real stencils for this step. I went through and rummaged basically my entire stash, grabbing ribbons, grabbing lace, grabbing burlap, grabbing all kinds of things, trying to figure out, I wanted to do embellish just this middle one that had the word love on it. Ultimately, what I decided on is just hot gluing down some greenery and some of these little roses, and then I called it good. This is a perfect little display that you can put anywhere in your home. Time to make a cute little love bug out of this wooden car that I got from the Dollar Tree Plus section. I started by painting the entire car red, then I painted the tires black, and finally I went in with some white paint and painted the headlights, the handles, and the fender with that paint. This is the fun part of this DIY, decorating this little love bug. I grabbed some of these felt stickers and stuck these on to, I guess, be the hubcaps of my little love bug. Then taking a popsicle stick that I painted white, I used my miter shears and just cut a little piece to make a license plate. I just hand wrote love bug and added a few little hearts to that. Then it was time to make a cute little pennant banner out of some fabric. I attached the pennant banner to one side of my car just using some hot glue and then taking some little white heart stickers. I stuck those all over the car. I also ended up adding some white wooden hearts to the front. You can kind of see it there um, around the headlights. Final step, I just threw in some fairy lights to make this kind of a really cute little lamp and then this thing was ready to be displayed. For this DIY, I'll be making over another Hobby Lobby clearance find. I also found this broken wreath missing some hearts at Goodwill. These are just little wooden hearts on here. And then using some of this black chain, this comes from Dollar Tree. They always have it out in the springtime. I'll be using that. My first step was just to pop off the back on the frame and then I painted that with some white paint, went in and distressed it a little bit with some brown paint and then painted both of the hearts with red. You can certainly do any color you wanted here, totally up to you. I put the backing back onto my frame and then glued my hearts down on to the back of the frame, then took my chains and all I did was glue those down to each of the hearts. Now I don't really know why I thought this was like a Valentine-y DIY. I'm not really sure, ball and chain maybe, but I just thought it was something different. It just shows the two hearts connected with the chain, as weird as that sounds, but it's something different and definitely perfect for those tiered trays, bookshelves, or even coffee tables. Let's make another wreath that I promise you won't be as time consuming as that first one I showed you. For this, all you need is a mini wreath form from Dollar Tree and some of these treat bags. I did grab red and pink. Start by cinching up the bags and then tying the cording kind of in the back, just double knotting it. You will be using that again. Once you have them all cinched, you simply just want to hot glue down the bags to that inner ring of the wreath form. And once those are hot glued, now take that cording 
and simply secure it to the back with some hot glue. So I kind of pulled it through and then wrapped it over that second piece of the wreath form as you can see here. I'm kind of tucking it under and then that is where I secured it with some hot glue and then trimmed off the extra. Then you can add things to this if you wanted to, some greenery, maybe some little floral picks sticking out on the edges. But again, I just love the simplicity of it and I love that it did not take very long to make. Check out how easy this Dollar Tree DIY is to make. You need to grab one of these wooden signs from Dollar Tree, some fairy lights, and scrapbook paper of your choosing. I got mine from Hobby Lobby. The first thing you wanna do is flip your sign over and on the back, take your fairy lights and kind of pull them and measure them along the edge, mark where the lights go with a pencil, and then take some type of tool to drill a hole. I'm just using my little rotary tool. If you don't like drills, this rotary tool is awesome. Everything I'm using in today's video is linked down below in the description box, but if you have questions, feel free to ask me. Once I got all the holes drilled, I placed my lights inside of the holes, and then I secured the wire in between each light with just some washi tape. You could use electrical tape if you choose to as well. The final step is just to take that scrapbook paper and secure it to the back and once that's done you have made yourself a really cute little light up valentine marquee Dollar Tree DIY is an oldie but a goodie. It's definitely probably one of my most popular Valentine DIYs that I've made. We're making a love vase. So to make it, you will need four of these love words from Dollar Tree. I did take off all the hardware and then I gave them a, a good coat of just the white chalked paint. You could use any kind of paint here or you could even cover the letters with some scrapbook paper. That would be really cute as well. Once I got them all covered with paint and they were dry, I took some burlap ribbon that I had in my stash and I glued it to to the backs of these love signs kind of leaving a little bit of extra um, I didn't trim off the extra I just kind of let it hang off on each end and on the sides and then it was time to start assembling so to get these pieces put together I did use e6000 now since doing this project several years ago I do actually prefer the gorilla grip um, clear glue as the strong adhesive but e6000 works just as well it's just a personal preference I did put all these pieces together glue it with e6000 let it set up overnight once that was done, I started to kind of trim the burlap and kind of place it and get it all, you know, put where it wasn't all hanging out everywhere. And then I also took some tower blocks and I made little brackets with those and just kind of put those in the corner of the vase to secure them. You might be wondering about the base. I just used that burlap because I had extra hanging off and just kind of made a burlap base basically I just kind of glued it you could add popsicle sticks you could add tower blocks to the bottom you could just stick a glass vase inside of this with fairy lights so many options but I absolutely love how it turned out Grab an 8x10 frame, some foam board, and some yarn, and you can make this DIY. I started by breaking down the frame and then covering the back of it with some brown burlap. Then I took a piece of foam board and using some poster letters from Dollar Tree as my stencils, I traced them out on the foam board, cut those out to spell the word love. Then using some yarn that I had in my stash that came from Michael's, I wrapped all the letters and hot glued them down onto the burlap. But I wasn't quite digging the brown frame, so I did give it a quick coat of some ivory colored paint, put that back together, and here I've got myself a cute love sign. Here is one of my favorite things to do at Valentine's Day. So you want to grab yourself a wooden heart. You could do this for a loved one, grandkids, your spouse, your friend, your neighbor, whoever, coworker, up to you. I grabbed three wooden hearts, painted them all red, and then on my Cricut, I created a decal that has their name, and then it says, Mom and Dad love you because. On February 1st, the wooden hearts get hung on their door, and each night when they go to bed, the hubby and I take turns riding on the foam hearts from Dollar Tree, a reason why we love them. And then we stick it to the door. So when they get up the next morning, they have a, you know, a great message on there that lets them know that they are loved. By the time Valentine's Day comes around, their door is covered with hearts, reasons why they are loved. And it's just kind of a really positive thing to do, a great, easy and cheap little thing to lift somebody up.
time to do a little makeover on this clearance sign that came from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to start with some of the Waverly Chalk paint in the color plaster and paint over the gather around. Then taking some wooden letters that I got from Hobby Lobby, I'm going to paint them red. It's an L, an O, a V, and an E. Then I grabbed 10 wooden beads and I painted four of them with some pink paint on this little contraption I rigged up out of uh, bamboo skewers and uh, paper towel rolls. It's very sophisticated. Um, and then I left a couple of the beads natural and then I also painted a couple red. Then I took some twine and I strung my beads up to kind of make it like a little garland and secured it all down on my sign with some hot glue. Last up was just to attach those wooden letters again using some hot glue and I've got myself a cute little sign. What does a votive candle have to do with a crafting technique? I'm about to show you. I have this one by four. I'm going to make a little sign here. And I started by painting it with some of this elephant Waverly chalk paint. I let it dry really, really good. And then I took a votive candle. That's right. Votive candle. And I rubbed it all over the sign. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you've seen this technique before. If you haven't, this is the best way to get an authentic chippy look. You want to rub the wax all over this, then go over with your top coat. Now the top coat, I'm just using a light colored Waverly chalk paint and um, I'm going to paint that and let it dry almost all the way. When it's kind of tacky, you want to take a scraper and just start chipping away. Chip away the paint, chip away until you get it looking how you like it. Now that the sign is dry and looking how I want, I made this reusable stencil with this plastic sheet. I will definitely link it down below for you if I can find it. And I cut this little design out on my Cricut. And again, I can use the stencil all I want. Attached my stencil and then just went in and dabbed on some paint. Now to keep the from bleeding, what I'm doing here is I'm going in with that plaster colored paint first. So this is the color of the paint that the sign is. Then I'm going to go on top of that with my darker color and that will prevent any type of bleeding. Since this sign is going outside, I did seal it with a little bit of poly and then I screwed on some eye hooks with some twine at the top and then I hung it on this black wooden post that I actually made quite a while ago before I even started my YouTube channel. Time to make a fun garland. I started with some of these cardboard sticker hearts from Dollar Tree and I wrapped three of them with white yarn. You could use any color yarn here that you'd like. Also grabbed three of the wooden hearts and used some brown stain to get those stained. Now I need to work on the filler. So I'll be using some of this red and white polka dot fabric that I cut to about six inches long, one inch wide. Also some of this burlap ribbon that I just simply cut to one inch wide. And then I used some Dollar Tree lace as well, cut that to six inches. Then I was ready to start assembling this. To do that, I started by attaching the hearts first onto some nautical rope from Dollar Tree, just using hot glue. And then taking the fabric strips and the burlap strip and the lace strips, I started tying those between the the um, yarn hearts and the wood hearts. Here is a great DIY that you can make for somebody that you care about. So I had this three pack of hearts from Dollar Tree. I pulled off one of the hearts and then removed that glitter again using my Goo Gone and a scraper to get all of that off. Then I took some paint and I painted the heart. Next you're gonna need some tumbling tower blocks. And what you wanna do is I kind of marked on some of the different ends. I'm drawing on hearts. You could paint on hearts, you could put stickers on them, whatever you want to kind of decorate the end pieces. I set three of the tumbling tower blocks down so that I knew where I could write my words and the words say I love you because now again you could do this as a coupon kind of thing if you wanted to gift it to somebody and I just traced over my words with a sharpie marker and then I hot glued down those three pieces of tumbling tower blocks then taking a pen I just wrote all the reasons why I love my hubby on them and then each day he can pull one of them off of the stack. You could do it for the whole month of February. You could just do it for 14 days leading up to Valentine's Day. Again, like I said, you could do coupons, but it's a great little gift idea. Mm -hmm. 
And that wraps up some of my most favorite Valentine DIYs. Let me know down below in the comments if you've made any of these or if you're planning to. Also, since we're talking about love, I would love to know your favorite love song. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos you might enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.